Welcome to Future Bank Today, a community dedicated to driving innovation in our financial institutions. This is your host, Jim Kittredge, and today's episode is on innovation and the failure of enterprise architecture. Imagine building a city over a number of years, one with roads, water, electricity, plots of land, the whole shebang. We have residential areas, commercial areas, retail areas. We have parks in the right place. We have schools near the residential areas. You know, at times it might be a little messy, perhaps. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's really workable. Now, imagine that same city already erected and working, as we said, pretty well. And suddenly, developers decide that it would be of a great advantage for them if they could put a shopping mall right in the middle of a residential area in order to be more convenient for our citizens of this city. Naturally, there's not enough water or electricity to support a mall, so we do some interesting things in order to pipe in more water and get more electricity into that area. Suddenly, the developers see that, wow, this was successful. Why don't we put a skyscraper right next to the mall where the company's headquarters for all those businesses could then be? And before you know it, we have hospitals next to the skyscraper. We have new houses trying to go up. And without noticing, all of the planning originally done in the city becomes useless. In fact, it becomes a free-for-all where buildings are put, where houses once were, houses are trying to be built where buildings are, and before you know it, the city becomes an entire cluster. Clearly, the city planners in this case have absolutely failed. This chaotic city, unfortunately, resembles exactly what our technology systems look like today. Why is that? How did we get to this point? I mean, it seems as if our systems, our strategy, our architecture is almost completely haphazard. So isn't it someone's role in the organization, someone's role to align the business strategy and business needs with the technology strategy, looking out on a long-term basis rather than short-term tactical solutions? The simple answer is yes. It's called enterprise architecture. Enterprise architecture has four main goals. It develops plans to consolidate systems and drive simplicity. It looks to reduce overlaps in systems and functionality. It builds plans to fill gaps. And it also tries to optimize technology spending to better serve the company. So how is architecture doing? Well, if you ask me, it's almost an abject failure. And before I go on, let me just say one thing. I made a significant portion of my career dedicated as a chief architect and the head of enterprise architecture and strategy at one of the largest financial institutions in the United States. And yes, I consider myself a failure at that also. Why do I say that? Well, I think there's several reasons. And those reasons held true then and I still believe they hold true today. If we were to poll 50 business leaders and 50 technology leaders and ask them how often they refer to enterprise architecture documents over a 12-month period, I would surmise the answer to be near zero. In fact, in most cases, it actually would be zero. It seems that architecture has not progressed to the point where people can readily consume the material and actually find it valuable. I know that's a radical thing to say, but I also think it's reality. There is today no alignment of business strategy with technology strategy, regardless of what people say. If there was, you would not see the chaotic cities that we've built in our technology environment. If you ask me, if we actually gave enterprise architecture access to the business strategies, allowed them to collaborate with them, and then gave them 12 months to model everything, 
they actually could do a really good job, especially if nothing else around them changed. Unfortunately, this just isn't reality today. The world is changing faster and faster each and every year. And unfortunately, architecture cannot keep up. It starts with architecture reporting to IT and actually not the business, but somehow it's supposed to influence how the business actually operates. That's almost a near impossibility. Then you look at the tooling, and quite frankly, the tools in architecture, whether it's Zockman or Togaf, they really stink. I mean, for the average person, to try to understand what those documents actually mean and say and how they relate is a near impossibility. And put those documents in front of a business user and they don't have a clue what they're trying to say. Something there has got to change. Add to that the whole concept of silo funding, where all the priorities are developed in the silo, not the enterprise. Things are funded through projects. They're funded those projects in that silo and definitely not enterprise level projects and you wonder why we end up putting skyscrapers in the middle of a residential area. I've already mentioned we don't have 12 months to model everything. Something has got to radically change. If I look at the definition of enterprise architecture from MIT or from Gartner or from TOGAF, quite frankly it's almost a near impossibility to accomplish. EA in my opinion is destined to fail. And in the world of innovation, where things are going to change quicker and quicker, EA is even more destined to fail quicker and quicker. So what's the bottom line? EA, in my opinion, is just a euphemism for a coherent enterprise strategy. One where leaders across the enterprise work in concert with each other on agreed upon outcomes, agreed upon ideas, and agreed upon costs, both short term and long term. Absent that, and most companies, quite frankly, are absent that, there is no hope for enterprise architecture to actually make a significant difference. So what should you do? I would focus on four things and four things exclusively. Number one, I would continue to drive complexity out of the systems as we discussed last week. Number two is I would expose misaligned priorities of both business and technology plans. And number three, and by far most importantly, I would stop documenting what is and focusing 100% on the future state. And in that future state, I would only have one priority, and that is where flexibility and room for innovation has plenty of leeway. Because, quite frankly, it is the only known priority you can have. And number four, I would get out of my ivory tower I would stop with the PowerPoints, I would stop with the documents, and I would take some sage advice from that great philosopher, Vanilla Ice, and I would stop, collaborate, and listen. Enterprise architecture is one of the most difficult roles in any organization today. And it is really important that anything you produce out of that organization is actually consumable by its users. If you're producing documents that people aren't reading, you really need to think about that and possibly stop and really understand what would be actually useful. Thank you for your time today and stay tuned for next week where we will have a discussion on the law of the three mirrors.